thank you doctor yeah so uh, so i'll start uh, uh, this uh, topic where, which is given a 7 year old girl presents with sexual precocity uh, so at the department of kem we have been uh, working in pediatric endocrine so i'll talk about our experience what uh, we have come across in managing such cases uh this is a typical case of a girl child coming at 7 years of age with breast budding the bone age advancement the uterine size enlargement the mri showing a small hamartoma so this is a classical case of central precocious puberty because of a small hypothalamic hamartoma but the question comes should we be treating this 7 year old child because the conventional teaching is below 6 years and above 6 years so uh, the cut off of 6 comes there when it comes to height benefit so i'll be discussing that part and the second part is is it a slowly progressive or actually a progressive precocious puberty which benefits in the terms of height need to be addressed so these are the two major questions which i would like to address uh, so what we understand that this has been a well established and studied science uh, it goes way back to 19 uh, uh 46 when this uh, girl with precocity got pregnant at 5 years 8 months of age and it becomes a news for the world and uh, we can understand when it comes to so not only the psychology of a child but the psychology of the parent is more disturbed when it comes to precocity and the final stature of a child is always compromised by 10 to 15 cm uh depending on the onset of the puberty and the age at which it starts and how it progresses uh conventionally from the data what we understand that the mean age of onset of a breast bud is 11.2 years if we add minus 2.5 sd it comes out to be 8.45 years if you go by the exact numbers uh but americans uh, said that it was a british data and our kids have a precocity a little early so the conventional cut off of 8 comes uh from the rounding of the figure from 8.45 to 8 years so we define precocity uh at a age onset of thalark any time below 8 years of age is taken as the onset of puberty and this definition has been there for many years now uh one thing which is very important that uh, the gonadarchy that is pubarchy which is dependent on the adrenarchy and the estrogen exposures are two parallel process because if there is a estrogen in a pre adrenarch child would not translate into pubarchy and that distinction should also be kept into mind while clinically examining a patient uh conventionally that uh, way back when the lh essays were available people have differentiated it into a central precocious puberty and a gonadotropin independent precocity where the basal lh would be low more so during the day but the distinction will be more during the night time when you do a night levels of uh, lh levels but more so they were using conventional essays and the difference was more stark when it was a gnrs stimulated test and you can get a clear difference between a central and a peripheral uh precocity uh again if you understand the etiology wise it's uh, there are n number of etiology and we find it very fascinating uh to look at the causes but they have been well established like hypothyroidism macun Uh, the adult tumors and the ovarian tumors and they were described before 1950s what is most interesting is the article uh, which comes from the novak he was a gynecologist who described that these are not these are constitutional precocious puberty and don't go behind adults and ovaries in every cases because there were no imaging modality in that era and people were going for adult surgeries and ovarian surgeries to look for a cause which could be precocious puberty just a, a pattern to understand uh, how easy the life is today as compared to when it would have been uh, way back and where people were thinking and it took a lot of time for novak to explain people that it's mainly constitutional uh, the second more important uh, differentiation which becomes a uh, a little difficult to understand these terms called premature thalarchy slowly progressive central precocious puberty and a progressive uh kind of a puberty or a central precocious puberty so these terms are interchangeable but what we understand that when it happens in the first 
four years of age, it is should we can define it as a premature thalarchy. Whereas because the first sign is thalarchy, so any puberty which starts will have a thalarchy, and you can call it a premature thalarchy at any stage. Uh, but uh, when it comes to a normal onset of puberty in an early form. it could have two patterns it could be slowly progressive or a progressive why we have to differentiate the two because the treatment will differ in the two categories so it is very important for us to categorize these two categories and what we understand from the science way back if you look at the lh and fsh patterns in the progressive uh, cpp the lh dominant response would be there as compared to the fsh if you look at the premature thalarchy mainly in the kids below 4 years of age uh you will get uh, uh, uh the, the response is the a and the b which is a premature thalarchy which is largely uh, uh fsh response whereas you have a equal response in a slowly progressive puberty it was further defined well because the sc limits if you see are going very high with the new ultra sensitive sc this group defined it a category b is a slowly progressive and a category c is a progressive and the difference between the two is the level of the lh rise on the luprolite hence the classical cut off of 5 was given from this category uh, from this study which we use on a newer lh essays so if you have a stimulated lh more than 5 is more in favor of a progressive puberty whereas otherwise it is still a slowly progressive puberty which is just driven by fsh and it is not progressed to that stage uh what we understand and what we learned as a student was any basal lh more than 0.3 or a peak lh more than 5 or a 24 hr estrogen value more than 184 defines a progressive uh, puberty again in endocrine we don't have black and white and there would be a gray zone other way round to define it in this large number of patients this new study Uh, which have 133 patients with a slowly progressive variant though they call it a pre uh, premature thalar and a precocity because the age is 7.3 in both the groups and if you define with a lh of more than 5 a central precocious puberty there may be a gray zone uh, in the lh so as per this uh, study what it uh, what we understand now if the lh is less than 0.1 you don't need a stimulation if lh is more than 1 you don't need a stimulation but a gray zone of lh is not a cut off of 0.3 it is between 0.1 to 1 is a gray zone where a stimulation test would discriminate the two variants where the variant is defined based on a lh value more than uh, 5 so now coming back to our case the basal lh was 0.65 basal fsh is 4.12 and post luprolide lh is 40 so this is suggestive of a progressive central precocious puberty and this basal fsh also gives a clue because basal fsh usually in a gonadotropin in independent puberty especially because of ovarian cyst if there is an autonomous estrogen secretion will be suppressed in those cases fsh and lh both are suppressed so this is a case of progressive central precocious puberty the bone age is advanced we look at a predicted adult height which is lesser and the mph is at the 25th centile in this case the next question should a usg be ordered uh, again as an endocrinologist i look at my endocrine numbers and use other tests as a corroborative evidence uh, this is one study which i like to look at when it comes for the size of the uterine length which has been defined as per the stage of the uh, puberty there is a huge overlap if you look at as the uh, pubertal stage goes up the uterine length goes up Uh, from 2.9 cm to 3.7 to 4.8 and so uterine length is one parameter which is useful on a sonogram and this uh, meta analysis also suggests a uterine length of more than 3.2 would suggest a precocious puberty which is progressive as compared to a slowly progressive or a premature thalarc uh, category so usg was done in our patient it turned out to be the uterine length was 4 cm so it's again corroborative in our case should we do an mri so if we read uh, many papers uh, they say that mri in a girl child beyond 6 years uh, should not be done again it is controversial but uh, when we apply it to a patient what we understand and uh, so this cohort of 770 girls 
when they studied the central precocious puberty what they found below 6 years the yield is 7% but above 6 years the yield is 3.2% so this number should be there at the background so sometimes we do a test to rule out a problem so we don't want to miss any of these problem in our girl child and we can order a mri if it is doable and feasible and the child is supportive enough we will definitely go ahead in that case so in our case this mri was done and they could identify a small hypothalamic hamartoma so the next question uh, the parents were asking is there any genetic reason for it and should we go for a genetic test in this case we didn't order a genetic test i'll come back to the reason why but lately what we have understand uh, is this initially there were some case reports of kis1 r and the kis1 but there were very few case reports but what is more interesting is there are many families of mk r and 3 where the loss of function leads to uh, the early puberty and it is a gene which is transmitted uh, Uh, with a paternal expression so father is transmitter uh, transmitting the uh, variant to the kids and you can understand an n number of patients have been described and it's not uncommon and it is followed by another loss of function uh, gene called dlk1 so genetics can be done but in our case since we had an mri abnormality in these cases genetics are not required as suggested by this if we think there is a central precocious puberty as in a sporadic case an mri brain does not show a lesion you can go for a genetic testing uh, so in our case genetic testing was not required but yes this test can be done and you can get a mk rn3 uh, variant in a cohort of a early puberty in a patient like ours so the most important questions why should we diagnose and how should we help them will a gnrh agonist treatment help in the final height of this girl child she is already 7 years of age uh, when they have presented to you so the conventional teaching against says a cut off of 6 uh, below 6 years if you start there is a benefit in the height and above 6 years there is no height benefit uh, and plus we should understand if there is a diagnosis of premature thalarchy or a slowly progressive puberty there is no benefit in the height so we are not questioning that in a case like ours where there is a progressive cpp whether beyond 6 years of age will there be any any benefit in the height is a question we are trying to uh, understand though we understand the treatment is very simple and it's not very costly these days so it can be easily done so feasible but should it be done is a question we go back to the previous study of 1994 which gives a cut off of 6 years if we understand the kids who were treated below 6 years of age there was definite improvement in the height outcomes as compared to the controls but beyond 6 years there was no benefit uh, with the gnrh analog treatment in their cohort but what we understand that the cohort which was below 6 years was actually below 5 years of age and the cohort which was above 6 years was actually about 8 years of age so what happens to the kids between 5 to 8 years of age is not just to make the matter simple the 6 year cut off was uh, floated after the study uh, but you look into the numbers exactly what happens to the kids who comes between 5 to 8 years of age and most of our kids with precocity will come at this uh, juncture so should we be treating them or not treating them is a question this is a very uh, elegant paper from french group from raja bronner who have uh, suggested that the more uh, is the bone age more advanced is a bone age uh, more benefit you will get with the gnrh analog which is uh, contradictory to the conventional layman thinking what we may have in this thing and the same results were extrapolated in this uh, large study group where the kids have come at 6 years of age 7 years of age 8 years of age treatment for the kids who have come after 8 years of age there was no benefit uh, whether you treat them or you don't treat them there is definite benefit for the kids who comes below 6 uh, years of age and their the final height sds is more than the target height sds in that case and that is equally surprising because they'll not lose height they'll gain some height after your treatment and much more than the target height even uh, between the cohort of uh, 6.4 to 8.3 years uh, what was understood all these cases were treated and the treatment benefit was maximum to the cohort which had a more advanced bone age 
as against the less advanced bone age. So between this age group, uh, the gray zone, there is a more the bone age is advanced, the treatment outcome will have a better height outcome if you have a more but advanced bone age. So in our case, the bone age was for a seven-year-old kid, it was 10 years of age. She was started on a GNRH uh, agonist treatment with a, a luprolite three-monthly depot. Uh, you can start with 11.25 uh, or 22.5 depending on the weight of the kid or escalate it later. Uh, and what you can see uh, on the follow-up, what you can understand is the, the child is growing with the centiles. Uh, the bone age uh, advancement uh, is halted and what we can predict, initial predicted height was much less and what we can predict is the current predicted height is much better than the initial predicted height. So definitely we think overall we'll be able to give a benefit of 5 to 7 centimeters to this child by treating her in time for her precocity. Uh, to summarize, uh, so what I would say, a puberty in a girl child at below 8 years of age, uh, as seen by Thelar, need a detailed clinical evaluation and uh, we should, there must be uh, some etiology, but most probably uh, it is an early activation of the HPG axis, which is constitutional in a girl child. Uh, once we have understood there is a thel arc, there is an activation, we should have, we have, we should be able to differentiate a slowly progressive variant from a progressive variant. And what, what helps is a basal LH and a simple luprolite stimulation test uh, with 20 microgram per kg and doing a test after one hour if you're doing only LH or if you're taking LH and FSH at three hours, you can do a one single sample. Uh, basal FSH also helps to rule out uh, peripheral causes. If it is suppressed, it can be a simple uh, ovarian cyst. Uh, we can go ahead with the MRI brain. And in case MRI brain is negative, genetics can be ordered in a case of CPP. Uh, sonogram, uh, look at the uterine length and use it as an adjuvant investigations. For an endocrinologist, uh, I always suggest look at the endocrine numbers uh, uh, for the diagnosis and other investigation are adjoint. Uh, GNRS treatment analog, yes. The younger the age, more the bone age advancement, lesser the predicted adult, adult height, better will be the final height outcome and the better it, the final height outcome would be better than even the target height. But in an age group of six to eight years of age, those who have a higher bone age advancement should be offered treatment. But when it comes to psychology, uh, psychological support for the parents or the kids, uh, then there is no questions and you can start the treatment uh, based on uh, that. But all these things should be understood before dispensing GNRH analogs. Though they are very safe, rarely we have encountered allergic reactions at times. Uh, Long-term outcomes are also safe in that regard though some concerns about obesity and other things. So we should be counseling them for managing weight. Uh, concerns about bone health, so sh they should be on adequate calcium and vitamin D. Uh, Post-GNRH analog, month, when you do a depot, post-depot LH can also be used to guide us about the adequate suppression in these cases. Uh, we tend to stop our treatment at a bone age of 12 to 12.5 because continuing beyond that bone age will not have advantage in the final height and uh, they can have a normal pu uh, puberty later on, normal fertility with the long-term data, which is quite uh, safe. Uh, I thank the organizers for inviting me for this uh, talk and I, I would say thank you and thank you for the patients uh, listening. Thank you.